Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. Going to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And there's, uh, again, so much going on around the world right now. There's a lot I want to cover. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I want to give a shout out to a few uh, other YouTube channels that are a great blessing to me that I think you would enjoy too. Uh, there are so many, there are so many people out there that are watchmen who are letting people know that we're living in the last days and, and are doing a great job explaining what's going on and with the signs of the times. So check some of these people out, I think they'll be a blessing to you. Uh, Minister Flows, F-L-O-W-Z, is how he spells it. Brother Daryl, <clears throat> Naomi Looking Up. Stephen Ben De Noon and Frank DeMora and his channel is called Proof of Last Days. Check these people out. They're doing some great work for the Lord here in the last days and I'm sure that uh, their videos will really bless you as you try to uh, keep up with the signs of the times. Uh, you know, the New World Order is absolutely almost here. And it will happen because multiple reasons. The number one reason that ensures that the New World Order will happen and will rise, number one reason, the Bible says it will. Period. Book of Daniel, Book of Revelation, make it clear in the last days there will be a one world government, uh, New World Order. Number two, it's too big to fail. It's been in, it's been it's been planned for decades. They've been working on the new world order, and it hasn't happened yet because it wasn't the right time. It'll happen on God's timing. We also needed the technology for the one world government, and we have that now. Third reason it's going to happen is very simple. People don't believe it. People don't believe it will happen or could happen. So they just idly live their lives and don't pay any attention to what's really happening right under their very noses. Just like World War II when, uh, when we took uh, Japanese Americans and put them in internment camps during the war. Just like the Jews during World War II and the Holocaust didn't think it was going to happen to them. But it did. Agenda 21 and the New World Order and all that is not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact. In fact, the Bilderberg uh, Group, which is one of the global elite New World Order organizations, is, have, is having their meetings this past weekend. Their secret meetings that they have one, you know, a big one once a year. They may meet more than that, but they had their big conference this past weekend where they discuss world events and setting policies. And then the fourth reason is. People just don't care. It's incredible how many people go through life, don't even pay attention to the news, couldn't tell you anything that's going on around the world. They just, they don't care. They, got, they just only worry about their own family, their own lives, and their own goals, and they don't pay attention to what's going on. So, let's just talk a little bit more about that. You know, in the, in the last week or so, the Obama administration officials have been giving a lot of different speeches at different commencements, and and, uh, wow, what messages they've been giving us. It started with Michelle Obama in her speech telling students to spy on their parents and spy on their co-workers and their friends and police their statements if they say anything that might provoke uh, hatred or might be a racial comment and to report them. And then we have Valerie Jarrett in a, in a, in a speech at a college telling everybody that the government can track every single thing that you do on the Internet. <clears throat> and then, now we got Joe Biden in a speech uh, to the Air Force cadets at their graduation ceremony and tells them that they, that their generation can bring in the new world order. I'm going to post an article about that into the description box so you can check that out for yourself. <clears throat> Obama, speaking to uh, West Point, makes the comment that 
The world is changing at an accelerating pace. Absolutely, it certainly is, Mr. Obama, and, and end time Bible prophecy, those events are accelerating at an incredible pace as well. And he said in this speech that it's your generation's task to respond to this new world. In a speech in Europe back in March, Obama said, We meet here in a moment of testing for Europe and the U.S. and for the international order that we have worked for generations to build. Who exactly has been working for this international order for the past several generations? Don't think it was our elected officials that we've elected. I don't think it was Congress. I don't think it was our president. I think it was, could it possibly be Satan and the global elites that run the world behind the scenes from the Bilderberg Group and the Club of Rome and the Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, on and on and on. United Nations. Those people, yes, they have been working for the international order, or the new world order. And that's why I'm telling you it's, it runs too deep, and it's too big to fail. <sighs> now, Hamas and the Palestinians are going to announce on Monday their new unity government. Again, Hamas is a known terrorist organization that has it in their charter that they want to wipe Israel off the map. I'm not going to read the article, but I'm going to post an article on the Jerusalem Post from today that says a rocket was fired into Israel today from the Gaza Strip. Looks like the Palestinians and Hamas really do want peace, considering that they're still firing rockets into Israel. But now Obama's going to recognize that government even though they are known terrorists. In fact, I'm going to look at this article right here now. It says, The Obama administration formally recognizes the new Fatah Hamas government. It says, well, that didn't take long. The Obama administration is, has now given official recognition and a White House invite to a terrorist entity. Isn't that great? He's now invited them to the White House. A senior Palestinian official reportedly announced that the U.S. has invited the new Palestinian Unity Government Prime Minister Rami Hamdallah to an official visit in Washington. It says, according to a report, a Palestinian official stated that the invitation is a declaration of American recognition for the Unity Government. The report cited the official as saying the visit will take place in June, during which Amadala will meet with the American president and visit the U.S. Congress. I'm going to post this into the description box. Uh, but it, oh, here's an interesting statement. It says, does that mean that the next time a missile from Gaza, which again did today, hits Israel, the White House will withdraw its recognition? We know it doesn't. Nor does it mean that U.S. aid, military and otherwise, to Hamas and Fatah is going to cease, no matter what Congress says. Why are we ever giving them any aid anyway? Israel is supposed to be our ally, not the Palestinians, not Hamas. Why are we supporting them in any way, shape, or form when they refuse to recognize Israel as a Jewish state? When they continue, as again, like today, firing missiles into Israel? Why are we helping them at all? And to go along with uh, Mr. Obama inviting inviting uh, the... Hamas, this new, this new unity government between the Palestinians and Hamas to the White House. We also have the Pope inviting them to uh, the interfaith prayer service at the Vatican. <sighs> wow. Let's pray with the uh, Islamic Muslim faith at the, at the Vatican. Hope God will bless that. Read the Bible. God's not going to bless that. Here's another article I want to I want to talk about real quick. Um, and I want to actually heard, first heard about this uh, from another gentleman, Dabu Seven, 
on uh, YouTube. Uh, check him out as well. Does a lot of short little videos. Little news reports are fantastic. Um, but I'm not hearing this anywhere else. But it's a very important um, news story, actually. Uh, Turkey has cut off the Euphrates River. I'm going to post this to the uh, description box as well. The, the Euphrates originates in eastern Turkey before flowing into Syria and Iraq. It's the longest river in western Asia. Uh, goes on to say, two weeks ago, the Turkish government has cut off the flow of the Euphrates to Syria and Iraq. It's been reducing its flow over the past month and a half. The move is already having effects on Syria, uh, where a man-made reservoir named Lake Assad has lost millions of cubic meters of water. Uh, it says, as the water levels drop, locals are considering shutting down the dam to preserve the water that is left. If they do this, there will be no flow from the Euphrates River uh, through the rest of Syria and Iraq. One way or another, unless the, flow, the full flow is returned, there will be severe humanitarian consequences for already fragile areas of Iraq and Iran. It says, I find that this amazing this is getting almost zero press. It seems likely that Turkey is trying to provoke a response from Syria so that it can, hand, that it, it can in turn, invade. There is definitely something else going to happen big in Syria. And the Bible says in, uh, in Isaiah 17.1 that Damascus will be a ruinous heap and will no longer be a city. So we know that there is some major warfare coming to Syria and probably very, very soon. Uh, but what's also interesting about this Euphrates River being dried up thing is let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 real quick. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Interestingly enough, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And the beast and the false prophet are about to rise. And the reason the Bible says that the Euphrates River is going to dry up is so that the kings of the east, which is a 200 million man army, can head into the battle of Armageddon. Guys, we are, wow, we are absolutely, absolutely living in the last days. What exciting times. Uh... I'm going to post another article just about uh, a boss uh, and, the, and what he had to say about this unity government. Um, this is out of the Jerusalem Post. Uh, but just the interesting thing is the article says, or the headline to this article says, uh, a boss says Palestinian unity government to be announced Monday despite Israeli threats. Says Israel has threatened to boycott the PA over reconciliation government with Hamas, warns against Israeli punitive measures in response to formation of Fatah Hamas government. <clears throat> Says in the Gaza Strip, Hamas spokesman said that the reconciliation train was about to arrive at its final station and will mark the beginning of the restoration of the Palestinian unity. The unification ends a seven-year feud between the Fatah and Hamas, but appears to place a final nail in the coffin of the U.S.-led peace process. Guys, the Palestinians do not want peace. If they wanted peace, we would have peace. If they wanted peace, they wouldn't fire rockets into Israel like, again, they did today. Uh, interesting, this is going to end a seven-year feud between Fatah and Hamas, just before the final seven-year period of time, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble, is about to start. <clears throat> and again, it goes on to talk about the failed peace pro process and how uh, it says uh, the U.S. has not stated its position on the unification and its impact on future talks. As we said all along, we'll not make decisions until we see the final formation uh, of this government. And uh, but the U.S. got the U.S. has not given up on the peace process. Interestingly enough, the U.S. government is also denying that they've invited Hamas to the White House. But it's a sad state of affairs when I believe Hamas more than I believe our own government. Our own government is full of scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal, and lies after lies after lies. So, uh, I, I do. I believe that the Hamas has been invited to 
is real. Uh, in fact, let me go back here. Because this, this guy just, he, this is a blog, and he just couldn't put it any better. He said, well, it didn't take long that they entered, the, the Obama administration has given official recognition to the White House. Um, and it says, Washington has previously announced it expects any Palestinian government to refrain from violence as well as recognize Israel and agreements. But, of course, when they don't refrain from violence and they don't recognize Israel, we're not going to do anything about it anyway. Because why? We're not friends with Israel, apparently, anymore. Um... <clears throat> And it's this is a really powerful article. I hope you read it. It says at the bottom, there's here's the thing about blackmail. Once you give in to it, it never ends. And it's also true that anything like, like this that someone threatens you with is something they're probably going to do to you anyway, eventually, out of sheer hatred. That's exactly what's going on here. President Obama's goal was always to destroy the relationship between America and Israel before he leaves office. And he's made a fair degree of progress. It's a major part of his agenda and no amount of groveling by Israel is going to change that. It's time Israel said no publicly. Wow. Um, well, again, God promises judgment if you go up against Israel. He says, I'll bless those that bless thee and curse those that curse thee. And so that Jerusalem would be a stumbling block to all nations. And all nations are going to gather around Israel to attack them in the last days. But I want to go back one last thing real quickly. In Obama's speech I quoted earlier, um, when he was talking about, uh, let's see, how did he say this? He said uh, that we needed to respond to the new world that is changing very, very fast. Um, he said, you know, in a speech in Europe, he said that... Uh, that the, we're in a moment of testing for Europe and the U.S. and for the international order that we've worked for generations to build. It's interesting they use the phrase, a time of testing. Because, praise God, I want to give you a little encouragement as I wrap up this video today. Let's look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. This is in the letter to the Church of Philadelphia, book of Revelation, Jesus says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to what? Try them that dwell upon the earth. Well, let's talk about that a couple of things real quick. Um, the hour of temptation. Kind of like a moment of testing, is what Obama called it. Um... <clears throat> A moment of testing that will come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. When it says all the world that dwell upon the earth, well, where are the people from this church of Philadelphia? Apparently, they aren't on the earth at that point because it says, I'm going to keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. If the uh, Church of Philadelphia was on the earth during this time, then they would be included in all the people who are dwelling upon the earth. So praise God, if you are a born-again Bible-believing Christian who, who has accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are living for Him, He is your Lord, He is your Savior, and you are ready, praise God, at some point Jesus Christ is going to return for His bride, He's going to take them home. The restraining power of the church and the Holy Spirit will be removed. And then Satan can run rampant and try to win the battle that there's no way he's ever going to win. Praise God. Jesus is going to come back and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. But it's time to make sure you're ready. For the sudden appearance in the sky, the trumpet will sound and Jesus Christ will call home his church. It's going to get crazier and crazier and we're going to see some stuff, no doubt. But be ready. When that trumpet sounds, you want to be ready for it to fly. 
And all the signs that Jesus said would be here are here. So keep looking up. God bless everyone.